Have you seen this? Why don't you just take your time and try to explain this whole thing from the beginning? It would almost be worth the world ending just to see these awesome places. Almost. Do you think anyone lives there? I don't know. Maybe there's water. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 post-apocalyptic landscapes in movies. For this list, we've chosen what we felt were the most iconic, interesting, and original visions of what a post-Armageddon world would look like on the big screen. And there might be a few spoilers ahead, so spoiler alert. God damn you all to hell! Number 10, Earth of 2077, Oblivion. It's been half a century since the scavengers destroyed our moon, forced to leave their own dying planet. Ever wondered what Earth would look like if aliens blew up the moon? Yeah, destroyed our moon and with that half the planet. Well, according to Oblivion, it would be struck with so many tsunamis and earthquakes that the human race would be forced to evacuate to other celestial bodies. Earthquakes toppled cities within hours. Tsunamis wiped out what remained. Then came the invasion. Well, everyone except Tom Cruise. He has to stay to protect the generators that power humanity's new home on Titan. Or so it seems. There is no Titan. They lied to us. Cruise's second film featuring an alien attack. This one shows an Earth far removed from the war zone of War of the Worlds. Rather, it's actually a thing of beauty, as nature has had a chance to start again over the buried remains of humanity. After that, nature took over. There's bedrock around Chicago, so we were spared the worst of the waves, the quakes. Number nine, humanless Earth, nine. When we woke in this world, it was chaos. Man and machine attacked each other with fire and metal. Nine is set after the world's first free-thinking robot has created an army of machines and destroyed all human life. But this film takes place so long after the robot apocalypse that only one machine is left. The only thing that remains now is the beast. The only other survivors are nine small ragdoll-like creatures that each have a portion of a man's soul inside. You are all that's left of humanity. You are all the pieces of my soul. And the city in which these creatures roam is just smoking remains. Basically, the whole thing looks like a really depressing level of Little Big Planet. And boy, does it leave a lasting impression. Look closely and remember what you see. Number eight, Flooded Earth, Waterworld. Nothing's free in Waterworld. <laughs> a pet project of Kevin Costner's, Waterworld depicts a future where all the icebergs have melted and the Earth has flooded at the onset of the 21st century. The polar ice caps have melted covering the earth with water. Those who survived have adapted to a new world. With dry land as just a myth, humanity survives on floating cities and boats. Dry land is not just our destination, but it is our destiny! <laughs> this original take on what a post-apocalyptic world would look like nearly bankrupt Costner and was the most expensive film ever made when it came out. You should have stayed on the water. <laughs> Regardless, no other movie has tried to showcase an Earth without dry land like this, and to such spectacular effect. Oh, thank God. Number seven, Infected Philadelphia of 2035, 12 Monkeys. This is 1990. I'm supposed to be leaving messages in 1996. It's, it's not the right number yet. That's the problem. The setting of 12 Monkeys is another unique landscape, but this time it's one that's set under Philadelphia in the year 2035. Yes, under. We live underground. The world belongs to the dogs and cats. 
the city of brotherly love has been hit with a virus so poisonous that humans have had to make their way under the Earth's surface to survive. The Army of the Twelve Monkeys are the ones who spread the virus, that's why I'm here. Meanwhile, a criminal, played by Bruce Willis, is being sent back in time to try and stop it, or to at least help develop a cure. When I locate them, they'll send a scientist back here. That scientist will study the virus. And then when he goes back to the present, he and the rest of the scientists will make a cure. This time-traveling element is especially effective in that it allows viewers to see the stark contrast between 90s Philly and its barren future. <laughs> Number 6. Infected London, 28 Days Later Do you want us to find a cure and save the world or just fall in love and f we all remember the famous shots of an abandoned London in this Danny Boyle-directed flick. Hello! Upon waking up from a coma, bicycle courier Jim visits just about every iconic landmark the capital has, as if he's on a one-man walking tour. But as Jim soon discovers, the city is far from empty. Look, if someone gets infected, you've got between 10 and 20 seconds to kill them. It's actually full of hordes of aggressive and senseless creatures. <laughs> No, not tourists, zombies. The sudden contrast between the seemingly uninhabited city and one bustling with people infected by the rage virus make this a memorable setting for a horror movie. Our location is the 42nd blockade, the M602, 27 miles northeast of Manchester. You must find us, please. Salvation is here. Number 5. American Wasteland, The Road. The roads are peopled by refugees towing carts and gangs carrying weapons, looking for fuel and food. This bleak film, based on the Cormac McCarthy book, is set in a world with little flora or fauna. We have to. We will survive this. We are not going to quit. The shortage of food and freezing climate has forced Viggo Mortensen's character and his son to trek across America. There might be food there. Everything depends on reaching the coast. As they travel, the audience is treated to shot after shot of a decaying, desolate country. Abandoned houses, collapsed power lines, and bare trees make up this iconic landscape. What is this place, Papa? <sighs> the house where I grew up. There are also cannibals. So that's cool. Or not. They're gonna rape me. And then they're gonna rape your son, and they're gonna kill us, and eat us. Number four, future Australia, Mad Max. You've not got a sense of humor. The Australian outback is already a beautiful and deadly place, but take out most civilization and put in a turbocharged supercar. Any more details? And you've got the perfect backdrop for an apocalypse. In this film, the Aussies are suffering from such a shortage of fuel that they're willing to fight each other for it. I'm a fuel-injected suicide machine. However, there's no shortage of leather, piercings, and lunatics. In fact, the outback is so full of marauding gangs of nutjob bikers that Mel Gibson comes across as sane. And we love it. Guess I always counted on you understand him. Number three, Junkyard Earth, Wally. -E. Wait, that doesn't look like Earth. This Pixar film shows us an Earth evacuated by humans after they filled it with garbage. Too much garbage in your face? There's plenty of space out in space. b &L Starliners leaving each day. And one plucky robot has been left behind to clear up the entire planet. This is no easy task, considering Wally is surrounded by piles of junk that are literally taller than skyscrapers. Put on your Sunday clothes, we're gonna ride through town. The film is a surprisingly deep take on complete loneliness and the dangers of overconsumerism. 
But the animated images of Earth are what stay with the viewer after the sci-fi romantic comedy has finished. Out there is our home. Home auto. And it's in trouble. I can't just sit here and, and do nothing. That's all I've ever done. That's all anyone on this blasted ship has ever done. Nothing! Number two, Ape Run Earth, Planet of the Apes. To suggest that we can learn anything about the simian nature from a study of man is sheer nonsense. After three astronauts land on a mysterious planet, they soon discover it's run by apes. Take your stinking paws off me, you damn dirty ape! These apes keep humans prisoner and have a society carefully divided into a caste system. This planet may seem far-fetched, but spoiler alert, it's a little closer to home than you might hope, thanks to a nuclear fallout and primate evolution. I'm back. I'm home. The idea of a world where apes rule and humans drool clearly caught people's attention, as this sci-fi film spawned several sequels and reboots. Tell us, why are all apes created equal? Some apes, it seems, are more equal than others. Ridiculous. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. I am a survivor living in New York City. I am broadcasting on all AM frequencies. Future. Number one, post nuclear holocaust 2029, The Terminator. Three billion human lives ended on August 29th, 1997. The survivors of the nuclear fire called the war Judgment Day. The Terminator helped set the standard for robot apocalypse movies. Not a robot, cyborg, cybernetic organism. Sure, the scenes set in the 80s and 90s are gripping and action packed. However, it's the ones that take us to the future that are really bone chilling. In these scenes of 2029, James Cameron shows us his vision of a world where machines have systematically worked to wipe out humanity. The idea of an army of metal skeletons hunting us down still terrifies us. While the barren, skeleton-covered battlefield of this robot conquest is an image that has gone down in film history and remains a vision of the worst-case scenario future. They lived only to face a new nightmare, the war against the machines. Do you agree with our list? Which post-apocalyptic landscape took your breath away? Where are you going? West. Can I come with you? No. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Still can't accept it. Time's wiped out everything you ever knew. It's all dust. Mm -hmm.